Hey guys, how you doing? It's Keon Corniff, also known as Mr. Finance. Yeah, I hope you guys are having a fantastic day, right? I told you guys I want to come on and have a money talk with y'all. It's been a while that we talk about things and we share what's happening, right? But as we could know that there's a big things going on in the money market right now, right? A big upset just recently happened. Hey, Michelle, how you doing? All right, we have a lot of great things that's happening in the market right now. A lot of scary times, and a lot of people are uncertain about the market. You know, hi Ciara, how you doing? All right now, one of the biggest things that's happening is that a lot of people don't understand the market. That's for one, right? So we're gonna get that out of the way. A lot of people don't understand how the market works. Uh, the other thing that we're going to talk about today is the fact that um, too many people take a lot of risk that they don't understand what the risk is about. And one of the biggest things we have to do is start learning how to properly grow money. And yes, if you want to take some risk, I'm not, I'm not against taking risk, but you must be, you must understand principles right of money um you must learn the rules you must understand that money is <laughs> i hate to say it but money comes with rules and it's a game and if you're not playing the game right then you're the one being played right do you hear what i said if you're not playing the game right that means you're the person that's getting played and if you've been following me for a very long time now, and you know I always talk about money, that's why they call me Mr. Finance. Hey, Candace. All right? If you've been following me long enough, then you know exactly what I'm talking about. Right? Hey, Alex Flores, how you doing, brother? John, how you doing? Right? So, like I was saying, it's either you're following the money game and playing the rules that money gives you or you're the one getting played. And people ask me all the time, Kian, what's the quickest way to get rich? <laughs> and I hate to tell you, there's no such way realistically unless you play the lotto or you get lucky. And the odds of you winning the lotto is very thin. As a matter of fact, let's look up that, right? Let's look up the odds of you winning the lotto. That's a good thing. You know, you guys always think the information that I carry is so important and it's so um, excellent. You know, getting the information that I share with you guys all the time, it's all at our fingertips. It's just that we are too busy Googling the wrong things or we are researching the wrong things. You see, if we shift the focus of trying to find what's so wrong with it, why not shift the focus to understand it? Do you understand what I mean? So don't focus so much on what is wrong with the product. You should try to get to understand the product, understand the vehicle, understand the opportunity. Don't look for the reasons not to be a part of it, especially when you Google people's opinion, right? I look at things and I say, okay, there's good and bad. Of course, there's pros and cons. But if you focus on just the cons and you didn't even look for the pros, then I hate to tell you that's how you miss opportunities because that's a poor mindset. You know what poor means? It's pretty much you passing over opportunities repeatedly. That's what poor means because you have a poor mindset because you look for the, the negative versus trying to find the one positive. So let's look at the odds of you winning the lottery, right? And just so you guys know, this is a little infomercial. Uh, yeah, I cashed in my ticket. I won some money off that $1.6 billion, all right? So I am one of those lucky winners of $2, all right? I won $2 of my lottery ticket. There you go. How about that? All right? So, 
I am one of those odds of winning money from lottery. And I won. I won two dollars off my ticket. And I took a four dollar loss. But I still won. Right? Hi Elena, how you doing? Alright, so let's look up the odds of you winning lottery, right? Odds of <laughs> this gonna be really, really funny. Odds of winning. Oh, look at this. The lottery. All right. Let's see. Let's read. Oh, my God. <laughs> Do you guys want to know what's the odds of you winning the lottery? Check this out. <laughs> the chance. They said chance, right? The chance of winning the National Lottery jackpot is 1 in 45 million. 57,474. Okay? That's the chance of you winning the lottery. Hello, Claudio. Um, Hello, Flint. All right? <laughs> That's the chance of you winning the lottery. So once again, your chance of winning the lottery is 1 in 45 million, 57,000. 474 <laughs> okay that's your chance of winning the lottery but on a serious note did you know that the chance of you becoming a millionaire is a lot 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 easier than playing the lottery all right let's look it up odds of people Becoming a self made millionaire. Right? These are things that I love to look up. Right? I love to look these things up because people always ask these questions. And I always say, wow, look at this. You ready for this? Check this out, guys. It says, I, I search, what's the odds of becoming rich? You ready for this odds? L listen to these odds. If you're over 62, your odds of becoming at least 1 million in net wealth, your total asset minus your total debt, are relatively achievable. About 1 in 7. But if you are under 40, the odds are low, 1 in 55. In the last 25 years, the odds that an old person is a millionaire have improved slightly. Wow. So the odds of you becoming rich is much more uh, uh, achievable without having to depend on the lottery. So now what we got to look at, right? We got to Google. See, I'm going to teach you guys how to do proper research. Now, let's Google. We're going to Google again. Let's see. What am I going to Google? What's a great career, right? What's a, a profitable business? Hi, China. How you doing? Welcome on. All right. So what, what industry... creates the most millionaires. All right, we're gonna look in the industry that creates the most millionaires. All right, let's see. Actually, maybe let me be a little more specific. In the US, it gotta be in the US, right? In America. All right, here we go. We're going, we're going to do research. We're going to do proper research today. All right. Okay, let's see the first one. The first one, top, top. It says the 16 industries most likely to make you a millionaire. Let's go through them. There's 16. All right. Let's scroll down here. These are in the U.S., guys. So I'm going to, I'm going to tell you the industries that will help you becoming a millionaire much faster. All right. So it starts with, let's see. Oh, here we go. Number 16. 
Number 16 is accommodation and food service. Just 4% of the expert survey thought, um, thought these sectors were going to be in the top three growth industry to make people rich. Still, McDonald's won't mind its shares price as double over the past. Wow. So McDonald's shares have doubled over the past six years. So number 16 is you owning like a fast food restaurant, like you buy a McDonald's franchisee or a Wendy's or something like that, right? So that's number 16. Number 15, utilities. It says experts don't seem to have much faith in the power units, right? Utilities, either with only 6.6% putting it in their top three growth industries. This could have something to do with the, the renewable energy sector, which comes higher up in the list. So that's another one. You could get into like power, utilities, and power grids. That's another one, number 15. Oh, look at this one. Oh, wow. I'm just going to read them. I'm not going to go through all of them. So number 14, it's natural resources, right? The oil and gas industry. That's number 14 that can make you a millionaire. Right now, they said um, oil is still hovering under $50 a barrel. That's great information. Number three, transportation business. Transportation business is actually gone up 13.9%. That's another industry that you could get rich off of. How about this one? Number 12. It says retail and wholesale trade. This sector is completely dependent on cons uh, consumer spending power, right? So if you open up like a... um like a target or something like that, right? You have a, a retail, retail and wholesale. Those are always the good, especially from the Caribbeans. That's where a lot of people go into that type of business in Jamaica or the Caribbeans. How about number 11, entertainment and recreations. I must tell you that is so true. Entertainment it is really, really cool. You know, they talk about examples like Pokemon Go, uh, which doubled Nintendo's share price. Um, prove that a big hit can make many people rich. You see, you just need one hit, right? But you got to be really good at developing a great um, entertainment, which is film, music, video games, and so on, right? All right. So now let's look at number 10. Number 10 is renewable energy, like fossil fuel, fuels, and will make around. So these are actually things that will make you very rich. It says it will make you very, very rich, that industry. And then number nine, aerospace and air transportation. So guys, if you got enough budget where you can start an air, airline company or put together something like a fly into the space, all right? This is your, your thing, number nine. Then it says number eight. Number eight is agriculture and mining. So if you own an agriculture and mining company, and they said, here's something. This is really interesting. Hello, Chris. It says here, most of this demand will be fueled by emerging um, economies in Africa and Asia. And 18.9% of experts say if you want to get rich, it's a good sector to go for if you can afford the high sunk costs, right? So, to you know, because the, the, the heavy materialistic that you're going to need. Hi, Monica. All right, so number seven. Look, listen to this. This is the next one that will make you rich again. Another, this is number seven industry that will make you rich. It says education. As wealth increase, more people get educated, which increase wealth. 19.8% of experts saw that education sector as a big million, millionaire sector. So that's why your college is so expensive. So you know what I got to do? I'm going to talk to some of me and my rich friends and we're going to open up a college. All right? Because they say number seven industry that could make us rich. All right, let's go down. Number six. Number six is communication. 
It says for a few years, Carlos Slim, the Mexican CEO of Telmax, was the richest man in the world. So there's a lot of money in communication. So I'm going to give you a, a little tip. So if you're listening to this, I'm going to give you the biggest tip right now. If you want to be rich in telecommunication, I want you to go do your research. Find out countries that don't have cell phones yet. Find out regions that is not into cell phones yet. Go down there. Find out how you can open up and use the FCC. And then open up your own telecommunication in that country. And you will become a billionaire. I kid you not. You'll become a billionaire. No joke. Uh, you want me to give you an example who did that? Digicel. Look how big Digicel is now. How about number five? Listen to this. Number five industry that will make you very rich. Real estate and construction. It says, as the ramp explosion in the global population continues, India and China are expected to hit 1.5 billion each by the year 2030. More people need place to live. And it says 20.2% of experts recommend getting into construction and real estate if you want to take advantage of all these people. So there's a growth population coming, right? There's a growth population coming. And they said that number five industry to get into is real estate and construction. Okay, let's come down. Number four. Number four is manufacturing. Manufacturing is the number four industry to get into. And you know, there's always building things. They said, if it, it, you know, battering with the Chinese economy slowed down in 2016, but people will always need things, which means there will always be manufacturing to make them, right? So experts said 22.3% um, peg this as one of the top three wealth um, creators, perhaps anticipate a bounce back for China as well. Number three, number three, listen to this. Number three industry that will make you rich. Healthcare. Healthcare is the number three. So they said that pharmaceutical industry will be the money maker as long as people care about staying alive. Through R&D, costs are also uh, prominently high. It says 30.1% of experts saw that the industry as well as one of the biggest wealth creators. That's number three, healthcare. Let's go down to number two. We're coming down to it. Number two, industry that will make you super rich. You ready for this? Tech. Tech industry. It said not just the usual tech like Google and Facebook, but also financial technology and disruptive tech like Uber and Airbnb as a successful story just to keep coming. It says 30.9% of experts saw this as one of the biggest money-making sector out there. So tech companies are really big. Hey, you want to know something really even cool about this industry? There's something called, um, oh my God, um, artificial intelligence. That is doing a number right now out there. Artificial intelligence is, is a big deal in the industry. They're saying it's even better than, than the, uh, the most doctors now to even determine someone. So... With no further ado, I fix my collar. I show you my shirt. My voice get a little deeper. As I tell you, the number one industry that makes you wealthy and make you rich, stinking rich. And not only does it make you stinking rich, but it make you absolutely smart. You ready for the number one? Let's give me a drum roll, guys. Don't mind my drum roll. It's my fingers and it hurts. Drum roll. The number one industry in the world that will make you stinking rich 
is none other the undisputed champ from, from 1940 below. And since Jesus walked and before Jesus walked, this has always been the number one industry that have created the most millionaires and created the most billionaires and created the most trillionaires. And this sector goes to the financial service. Financial service, guys. The industry that I'm in. Yeah. <laughs> listen to what they say. All jokes aside, listen to this. They said there, <laughs> there's a reason bankers are generally very rich. And 35.7% of respondents to the world's wealth reported said finance was amongst the three sectors that most likely created more millionaires with senior bankers on Wall Street and City of London paid well over 1 million, right? Or 1.3 million on an average, uh, on an average, according to The Guardian, and it stills the best industry to get into if you want to make a lot of money and are willing to work hard for it. So there you got it. Did you see now who is the number one industry that could make you rich? The financial industry. Did you know that the financial industry is a 77 plus billion dollar, no, a 77 billion, um, trillion dollar industry? And I know what some people say, well, what about real estate, Keon? Well, it's only 12, around 12 trillion. It's way down there. Real estate, it's down there. Right? But as for financial services, think about it, guys. Everything evolves around money. As long as people use money, the financial industry will always be the number one. You're always going to need a place to bank your money. You're going to always need somewhere to save your money. You're going to always need somewhere to grow your money. And when your money needs to be taxed, you're going to always need to put your money somewhere. Think about it. When you buy things, you're going to need money. We don't live off the barter system anymore. Everything re revolves some form of currency or some form of money. There got to be a transaction got to be made. Someone will sell you something, you have to buy it. You will sell them something and they have to buy it. That's how the world works. So as long as you're in this world and you want to be very successful, I suggest you get into the financial industry. It tells you right there. Business Insider tells you this. So this is the reason why if you see that I'm always expanding and I'm looking for more people to share these knowledge and skills with so that way you too could learn how to capitalize and educate people. Educate families. You know, I was an average Joe, man. I was an average Joe. Five years ago, I was an average guy. Right? I was an average guy. I used to work three jobs. And through my hard work, dedication, I got my certification. I got a lot of knowledge. I dedicated many times into my craft. And you could say, I guess you could look at it in a different um, perspective and say that it's like going to school. But it's just that instead of having the high student loans and the whole bunch of debts, I took another route. I went straight into the field. I learned how the industry was. I mastered my craft. And I'm still always a student. I'm always open no matter what. I'm always a student. And because of this student uh, mindset of mine, it made me very humble to always willing to learn. And that's something that I have always done. I'm always willing to learn. I'm always willing to listen. I'm always willing to do uh, research and get understanding and knowledge. That's why I learned so much over this past five years. Um, first two years in this, I was part time. I was still I had to keep my full time jobs, right? Well, my three part time jobs that kind of gave me a full time job, I guess, right? And it took me two years to go full time. And I'm not gonna sit here and tell you like, oh, you're gonna do this out of nowhere and you, you're gonna become this rich. And money's just going to keep flowing out of their ass. And, you know, no, it, it doesn't work that way. 
My mom always said, anything that comes easy, go easily too, right? It's, it's work. It's hard work, but at least at a good time, at the same time, you're learning. So even if I quit tomorrow, the amount of knowledge I've gained, the amount of experience I've gotten, I could go to any financial institute and I'll, I will get hired just like this if I had an employee mindset. Or if I wanted to go start my own firm in any other country, right? I have enough knowledge and enough understanding to how to do it and how to fund it, how to develop it from scratch, from the ground up and what is the requirement to do it. I've learned so much, right? And that's one of the greatest things that I must thank WFG and WSB for because being one of the largest uh, financial institution out there or financial services, if it wasn't for this company, what you may think is the average guy, that was me then, not now. I'm far from average now. I, I, I'm not here to toot my own horn, but I, I, I promise you that I'm definitely smarter than your financial advisor. I'm definitely smarter than him. And I guarantee a lot of my peers in the business are extremely smarter than your financial advisor. I guarantee probably my seven-year-old son no more is than your bank teller, right? If he was here, if he wasn't at school, I would have him come here and actually share with you what are things like the rule of 72 and break down compounding interest. He's seven years old. He was knowing this since he was five years old. He learned about, I teach them. I teach them the rule of 72, compounding interest. I taught him about the difference with the formula 1020. I teach them the different three ways your money get taxed when you need it. And he's only seven years old. My son no more than the average Joe. All right? And the reason why I say that to say this is because before him, my mom didn't have these knowledge to give on to me. My mom never had these knowledge to give me to prepare me and give me the way. And I'm not saying there's nothing wrong with, with, with my mom because my mom was a great saver. My mom was a great investor. She's an amazing entrepreneur, one of my heroes. But I'm just saying that the things that I've given my son on top of what my mom already gave me, it, it, it is like steroids. Like I, I, I wouldn't be surprised if my son is a millionaire by the time he's 15 years old. Because he got exposed to so much, right? He got exposed to so much. The kid is already mindset. You can't talk to him about a job, just so you guys know. My son, seven years old, you can't even talk to him about a job. He will clearly tell you, I'm not looking to have a job. I'm looking to start a job so I can employ people and create more opportunities. Listen to my son, seven years old, and he's already thinking like that, right? So we have to get in that mindset. I don't have I don't knock people for having a job. I don't knock people for working an honest living. I just don't want people to get stuck in in the in the in the in the place where they feel like they depend on a job and then they, they give up their morals and they give up their standards and let people talk down to them. I remember I worked at this one place um, I'm not even going to say the place, nor the name, or try to um, deformation of their character. But I remember one day I came in late. He never asked me why I was late. He never asked me what was going on. And it was the time where um, I've lost a friend of mine. And I took it hard, right? So I came in. I was like literally about 15 minutes late. And it's not like I didn't call. I called and I tell him, hey, I'm running a little late. I'm not feeling too well, but I'm still coming in, you know, because I, I wasn't going to leave my work on them. Hey, brother, how you doing, Thomas? And as I came in, they tried to rip me a new one and all that. And I remember looking at him and thank God I was in this business, right? And I looked at him and I said, you know what, man? You're fired. And he's like, what? I was like, you're fired. I fire you. And I got up, I gave them their name badge, and I said, I don't need your service anymore. You're fired. And I remember walking out, and he's walking out behind me and saying, Kyo, what, what are you doing? What are you doing? And I was like, 
Did you not get it? You're fired. I no longer need your service anymore. And I walked out. And I never looked back. You know why I was so confident to do that? Because I had this business. I had this business. And it was because of this business why I was able to fire my boss. And ever since, I never looked back. I left that company five years ago. Fired my boss. Or well, my manager at the time. And I remember them calling me because it's probably so confusing for them to, see, to hear someone say, I fire you, right? The employee firing the manager. I don't need your service no more. You got to empower yourself. See, what I've learned over the years is that these so-called jobs are these paycheck opportunities. They have learned to degrade people. They have learned to look at us as we're slaves. Or we're just some number they can replace. And they fail to realize the quality in you. They'll fail to realize the quality in us. That we are people. We are extraordinary people. That have extraordinary abilities. To do great things for a company. For a job. And for a uh, opportunity to expand their brand. I always heard that a paycheck, right? A paycheck is only a bribe for you to forget about your dreams. How powerful is that? A paycheck is only a bribe for you to forget about your dreams. People told you to start being realistic and go get a good job. Why didn't they encourage you to go start a good company where you could create more jobs? Everybody would encourage you to go to school, get the good grades, go to a good college, and go find a good job. But they forgot to tell you that you're going to go to this good school, you're going to get these good grades, you're going to walk away with a whole lot of debt, and then get a job to pay down these debt and live paycheck to paycheck. You ever notice everything that you want in life that they tell you that you need? It requires you to go into debt to achieve them. Why not live a life that most people won't live now to only to grow yourself to then achieve the things that people can only dream about having? Today, I have that. I'm not the richest guy in the world. I'm not rich. Yet. Yet. I'm not wealthy, I should say. I'm rich in life. I'm rich in time. I'm rich in control. I'm rich in enough money for me and my family to survive. I'm rich in that. But wealth is when I can make sure that my kids' kids are good. That's what I'm trying to get to. I'm trying to secure my kids' kids. Right? We got to start thinking big, man. Talk big. Learn things how to get big. And hang around big dreamers. If you keep hanging around people that are realistic in life, those people are dead already. You know they say there's many people that died at the age of 25. It's just that they didn't get buried yet. <laughs> Their dreams are dead. And they start being realistic. You think Albert Einstein was realistic? Do you think Steve Jobs was realistic? I hate to even bring up this president. You think you think Donald Trump was even realistic? No. You got to be a big dreamer. Do you think Obama was realistic? Do you think Abraham Lincoln was was realistic? Realistic is the death of your dreams. When someone told you to tell you to start being realistic, it's because they already given up on their dreams. They've given up on their goals. They've given up on their life. They are the walking dead. People that are realistic are people that are scared. People that are realistic 
are cowards because they care too much of what people would think about them if they say how they truly feel about their dreams and their goals. They care so much about someone else's opinion, even strangers that they have no idea who they are. They care what they think and they are afraid to say their goals and their dreams out loud. How many times have I come on these lives and I tell you that I'm going to be a billionaire. I'm going to be a billionaire before I'm 50 years old. Better yet, in my establishment, I will make 1,000 millionaires before I'm 50 years old. So when someone look at me and they say, you're not even a millionaire yet. How are you going to talk about helping people become a millionaire? Shut your damn mouth. You just mad because you're broke. You're broke. You are poor. I'm rich. See, I'm brave. I don't care what people think about me. What people think about me is none of my business. That's your God forbid. That's your right. That's your second amendment. Freedom of speech. Freedom of thinking. That's what make America great. I don't care what nobody think. Stop caring what people think about you. What do you care? Let me tell you something. You could do good. They still hate you. You could do bad. They still gonna hate you. You could sit there and do goddamn nothing. They'll still hate you. Stop trying to prove people wrong and focus on the ones that believe in you and prove them right. That's all I do. If I find that someone's a hater, I separate myself from them. If I find that someone is no good for me, I separate myself from them. If I find out someone's negative, I separate myself from them. Let me tell you something. I don't have friends. I don't believe in the word friend. I don't believe in a girlfriend. I don't believe in a friend. I don't believe in that word friend. Because you know what comes with all those words? Friend, girlfriend, boyfriend. There's a three letter word at the end of it. It's called end. It is meant to end. It is meant to over. It is meant to finish. Friend, boyfriend, girlfriend. I don't have time for that. Life is too short to have friends. You know what I look for? I look for the qualities in people and say, hey, how can we make you family? Where can I find a family? You see, most people think that family has to be related. No. Relatives and family are two different things, two different relationships. I have relatives that I'm not family with. No, they're haters. I have family. You know what the word family means? F-A-M. Fam. Do you know what the word fam means? I'll let you do your own homework. Do your own homework on that. Look at the word fam. What does fam mean? But the I-L-W, what that stands for in acronyms, it means that I love you. So if you love your fam, you always be with them. You always love them. So family means fam, I love you. So if you can't love someone, they're not your family. And if they can't love you, they're not your family. I was just having a talk about this. I told, I was telling my, 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 my business partners and, and a few of my supporters who are, I call my clients supporters. I don't like the word client because it makes it sound like they're a customer or something. I like to call them supporters because they support me and by being my, by being, um, one of my supporters, they support what I believe in and they support what is the reality of things. So I was talking to a few of my business partners and um, supporters about this. And I said, stop being people's best friends if they're not your best friend. Do you understand? You ever have someone where you say, yeah, that's my best friend. But when you ask them, they have a different best friend. Guys, come on. Are we not having that much of a common sense to realize these things? If you're not their best friend, but you're their, but they're your best friend, how's that work? 
That don't work. It doesn't make sense. She that best friend, it's gonna best the end. I believe you. You grew apart. You know how many best friend I thought I had in high school? How many of you guys are still friends with friends from high school? Like really, really friends. See, if you still have the same friends from high school and they didn't evolve and they're still doing the same thing as in high school, I hate to tell you, you're the average of the five people you hang around with. That's reality. You are the average of the five people you hang around with. So if you keep hanging around with losers, keep hanging around people doing bad things, I'm sorry, you'll become one. Bird of a feather flock together. So because... I don't have a lot of my friends or some of my family that I really look up to in this business or that I want my kids around. If I see they're not behaving the way that I think should be um, constructive and productive, I don't hang around with them. I really don't. Because we have to put ourselves in positions to always win. We can't take any losses. We got to be in a winning position. And the best winning position you could put yourself in is one that will actually elevate you and grow you. You must evolve into your greatness. You're always one decision away from changing the future for the better. What are your daily f decisions? I'm not going to sit here and tell you that I'm perfect either. I battle with many things. But if it's one thing I don't battle with, I don't battle with my associations. I have a very small circle. And I always learned that the more successful you become in life is the smaller your circle will be because that's when your standards get higher. See, if you're the smartest person in the room, you need to get out of that room because you have outgrown the room. These are things I've learned. And these are things that have helped me to make money decisions and business decisions and also life-changing decisions, not only for me, especially if we are parents. We want our kids to be better than us, not like us. I love Swan Wen. I love Swan Wen because of the simple fact that he's such a great example, man. I look at his humbleness, right? If any of you guys don't know who Swan Wen is and you would love to have an opportunity to know who he is, let me know, right? Because then you could go to an event and you could definitely hear who this guy is. Or better yet, we could invite you to one of our webinar. You learn who Swan Wen is. But Swan Wen, humble guy. Humble guy come from like his story to where he is today. Literally, he had one decision. One decision that could have changed his life forever. And he took that chance, that risk, and come to America while the country was in war. Went through a refugee camp. Came here by himself. And then came across this opportunity 30 plus years ago. Helped many families. Helped my, people like me. Give people like me the opportunity to help people like you. And as much money as he make, he's such a down to earth person. The money never changed them. If anything, the money made them much nicer. And that's something that I idolize because when I do become quite wealthy, I want to teach my kids how to become a servant to the world, to people. Because being a servant is the highest paying job. It gives you the greatest fulfillment. There's nothing that makes me more happier then when I help a family secure their future. Then when I help a family plan for their kids' college and they know that they're secure. And when I do get compensated for that service from a company, not them, from the company, I enjoy that way more than if I ever had to sell someone something. That's what World System Builder is about. That's what this financial service industry is about. That's what our financial literacy campaign, our educational campaign is about. It's about becoming the greatest version of yourself. 
It's about finding your purpose. Many of us in life do not know our purpose. And I encourage you to take on the WFG, WSB challenge. And we could help you find your purpose and educate you along the way too. He did it for me, man. That's why I love I share with you guys some of my old pictures because when I share my old pictures with you guys, you guys are like, no way, that was that was him? That's Mr. Fernandez? Oh my God, look at him. I can't believe that's him. That was you? Yeah, that was me. That used to be me. You know, I remember Jay-Z said a very famous line. He said, when people look at you and say, man, you change. I have many people that tell me that, man, you change. You act different. You think I worked this hard to remain the same? You think that I worked this hard? You think, were you there when I had to give up seeing my brand new son, my brand new baby boy? I sacrificed three months out of his life to study for my license. Because if you guys didn't know, at the time when I first started this business, I had a learning disability. I don't have one anymore. But I had a learning disability. I have a short attention span, right? I had one. See, I speak things in existence. I had a short attention span or I'm overcoming something, right? Never say you're broke. Say you're overcoming um, an, an adversity, right? So I had to focus. Who was there when I was sacrificing all of this? Who was there to see when I was going through all the tough times? Who saw all the downsides? That's why I said most people don't know what an overnight success look like because in most cases, some people say, man, that guy is successful, but you never saw the 10 years of hard times he went through. So an overnight success might be an overnight success that took 10 years to happen. Don't rush your journey. Don't let people talk you down, man. Be the bamboo tree. I want you to look up something before I let you go because I have to go get ready for our webinar. There's a bamboo tree story by Les Brown. Listen to it. And it will, it will let you know that you're doing fine. That you're, you're doing great. Don't let nobody else make you feel less than. If you're ever having a bad time and if there's a way you could reach out to me, inbox me, whatever, please do so. Because we as human beings, we must learn to love each other, help each other, and empower each other. That's the only way we will make things go great again. This is the only way. Love is the answer. It took me, what, 30 years? I'm 30 years old now. It took me 30 years to learn that. Love. But you must learn to love thyself before we can love anybody else. And we got to work on love. And smile more. Smile, man. Life is a beautiful thing. So love each other. Even when someone bring you hate, you just love them. You'd be surprised how powerful the word I love you is. If someone hate on me, I just say, man, I love you. If someone bring me bad news, I say, man, I love you. Don't be afraid to tell people you love them. It doesn't have to be sexual if you tell someone you love them. Sometimes people need to hear that. Because maybe they never heard that I love you from people that even care about them. So love is the answer and love is the cure to all negativity and all things. So... With that said, I hope you guys have a great day. I hope you had a fantastic time. I hope um, I enjoyed the fact that you stayed with me and enjoyed this. And remember to share this. Let's encourage each other. Let's keep spreading positivity. And let's keep having these talks, right? And we'll always have a money talk. And thank you, guys. I appreciate you all. And I love you. And always remember, you're one decision away from changing the future for the better. Let's keep making the world a better place. All right? Find your purpose. And I'm pretty sure I hope some of you guys caught some of that today. All right? Have a good day. Love you guys. Bye-bye.